Our topic today is women in their growing role in political parties, a topic that exists for a very long time already. And after all those years, it is still there and evidently still a challenge for parties and um, political bodies. For this debate, I would like to introduce um, our listeners to my fellow members of the International Adenauer Network. We have Jagalan Vataya from Mongolia. Welcome. Um, Flo uh, Florencia as well as uh, Bacaro from Ag Argentina and Aya Chiari from Tunisia. Thank Happy uh, to have you here. Thanks. Um, let me start with you, Jagalan. You may have heard that the Christian Democratic Party in Germany has recently obliged its um, executive boards. Um, on every level to implement a temporary quota for women, starting with a minimum of 30% this year, increasing to 40% um, in two years, and to 50% women represented in the executive boards um, in two th uh, 2025. Mm -hmm. And um, I can assure you, um, this, I call it an achievement, uh, took us quite a long while in Germany. So, Jaglan, you are a member of the Democratic Party of Mongolia and the vice chair of the Democratic Women's Union um, within your party. How is the situation in Mongolia um, for women in politics and what causes especially you to be engaged um, in the women's wing? Mm -hmm. um, maybe some people may say maybe for political position <laughs> or uh, what, yeah, what was the reason for you? Um, thank you very much, Kim Ti, for hosting this uh, podcast and thanks for having us uh, discussing this very important topic, topic obviously. Um, first of all, I would like to start with the general situation in Mongolia. Compared to some um, other countries, Mongolia has been relatively um, egalitarian in terms of uh, the position of women in society in general. We were actually, in fact, one of the first countries in the world, uh, uh, definitely the first country in Asia to um, uh, give uh, voting rights to women. That happened in 1924. And so far, um, the role of women uh, in society participating in all different sectors um, has been very high. And people perceive Mongolia as being a relatively egalitarian society in those terms with a relatively little gender bias. Having said that, um, I would like to also mention the percentage of women represented in parliament. We have 17% women in parliament, which is below the global average of 21%. Um, and um, so our goal right now is to make sure that more women are represented at a politically high posts within the government, within uh, the parliament, within political parties. And with that introduction, I go back to my own party, the Democratic Party of Mongolia, and what are we doing in that respect, right? We want more women in high political posts. And political parties are obviously gatekeepers, you know, to political life. You know, political parties nominate uh, candidates for parliament. Um, they form the government. So um, what kind of rules political parties uh, go by uh, within the intra-party democracy are very important for women's representation. And that's where um, um, rules like you know, gender quotas come in. In fact, we had a similar um, development um, back in 2017 when we introduced women-only seats in the National Policy Committee, which is the governing body of our party. And so we had a, um, a, a, a seat only for women. So it was a, gen a gender quota, basically, and um, I think it uh, went quite successful. You know, we have uh, many women represented in almost every district, and we have uh, a relatively high representation of women in the governing bodies, but it's still not enough. So right now, uh, we're also talking about and lobbying and advocating for legislation at national level, perhaps in, uh, increasing uh, women's quotas, um, in the election laws. Currently, we have a gender quota in the election law, which is 20%, and, uh, but 20% is not enough, obviously. And sometimes, you know, gender quotas like that become the minimum. Uh, but, well, it, they're supposed to be the minimum, but they become the maximum. It's like, oh, the law says that you have to nominate 20% women, so we nominate 20% women. No, but this is the minimum, you know, this is the floor. 
and sometimes it becomes the glass ceiling that we can't break. So uh, we're advocating for um, a national um, legislation to introduce quotas in the election law itself, which uh, brings this uh, minimum to 40%, for instance. I would say that uh, quotas and instruments like this have, um, like a, have a mixed kind of success rate. Sometimes, you know, as I said before, it becomes the minimum and, you know, it kind of curtails women's participation even more. But I think parties can do um, a lot of things in order to bring more participation of women, you know, like, and quotas are only the uh, most bare, basic thing. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, thank you, Jagalan. Um, I think one argument that we also hear very often is um, that we have, for example, a gender quota with 50%, but then we only have 20, 21 or 25 percent of women being engaged in the party. So um, there's an argument that this also causes kind of injustice, right? Like mm -hmm. um, giving the minority in the party more seats um, mm -hmm. compared to the other group. Um, what's the number, uh, what's the percentage of women as members of CDU, for example? So um, members, um, I think it's around 26. Mm -hmm. um, I, I need to look, uh, look it up again. But then also in parliament, um, in the parliamentary group of the CDU, um, we have 25% women. And in the parliament in general, 35%. So even in parliament, it's, it's um, definitely not in the position where we can say we have we have a gender equality there. But having this been said, maybe one question. Um, so what do you do in your party to actually attract women to become member of the parties? Because this is also, we can talk about quotas a lot, but in the end we need um, more women in parties so that they can actually um, go for positions and fight for their ideas, right? I would say um, there are different challenges in different countries, right? Uh, in our case... Um, the membership is almost equal. So it's like about 50% women, 50% men. But when it comes to high positions, the number of women goes down. So that's why we introduce quotas and mechanisms like that to make sure that women who are active members, who are engaged with the party, can, have, um, can actually uh, get elected to internal party posts. But then um, if you have like a low membership rate of women, that's an entirely different challenge, right? I mean, you're, uh, you should be working on um, attracting and maybe making the party a more welcoming place for women. And I would say that um, women's wings uh, actually do play that role. Uh, because, you know, from, for people coming in from outside the party, you know, who are new to political life, sometimes women's wings, youth uh, wings can be... Uh, a more welcoming place, you know, where you have uh, the same issues, when you, you have common topics, you know, before you move on to that more, um, a different level of political involvement. 